Tesla has is getting very, very tight. We're either going to confirm the top of the channel. I know it sounds so simplistic to say, but this is kind of what it, what it is. This is how tight Tesla is getting. We're either going to confirm this whole top of the channel that started on December 30th. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good trading day. Excuse me. Um, so let's talk about the tape. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of abbreviated update. Uh, I have a, my son has a basketball game, so I have to kind of play daddy duty. So we'll go on from there. So let's let's talk about yesterday. Yesterday, uh, we had an, for about three quarters of the day, maybe 85% of the day, we had a really aggressive session. We talked about this last night on uh, NASDAQ. Uh, the Qs reclaimed the 270 level. Uh, the SPYs, the SPX reclaimed the 50 day moving average. And somewhere right towards that afternoon, 2, 230 uh, area, you had a pretty aggressive rug pull, like literally out of nowhere. Uh, you know, the Fed's uh, whether it's the chairman's, the government's, the president, the Atlanta Fed, blah, blah, blah. They're just talking heads. One says one thing, one says the other. With, with the market reactions, one day is completely different than the other. And yesterday, after a really great grind the whole day, um, reclaiming some major levels, especially in the SPY, we got pulled, right? And the SPY went red, the Dow went red, and you're just saying to yourself, well, what the hell happened here? Uh, we put inverted hammers everywhere. The SPX lost the 50-day moving average on the close. And when you look at the futures overnight, you know, the Dow was down like 150, and the NASDAQ was down 40, and you're like, well, again, here we go, right? We're gonna go right back to the, the bottom of the channel. You wake up this morning, you got Netflix uh, initiated with a sell uh, by Goldman Sachs, and you're like, wow, here we go. All the high flyers are getting hit. Uh, Microsoft gets gets upgraded, but gets rejected at first off the off yesterday's highs. It almost goes red in the day. Apple was weak today. You say, here we go. Here's the recipe. Here we go. We go right back to the bottom uh, bottom of the channel. But I tell you, to to the bulls' credit, uh, and this is kind of when we when you watched last night's video. You said I, I really didn't know what to expect uh, today. You know, we 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 knew the levels. Uh, that the bulls need to defend. We knew the levels that uh, the SPY needed to reclaim. Uh, and we knew the levels that the Qs, although they did get pulled yesterday, yes, they still put in its highest close. If you watched last night's video, they still put in its highest close in this whole formation above the 270 level. And we kept on reiterating the point what the bulls need to do is not lose that 270 level. They just keep on building above the 20 day moving average. And at the open, they did lose the, the, the 270 only to reclaim it towards uh, mid morning, and then we started rallying again. And, and the names there were strong, continues to be strong. You know, Netflix, um, regardless of the fact, I mean, I mean, this is pretty amazing. At, at this morning, if you look at the 60 minute view, this morning, right? With this morning, you had, you know, sell, it was selling stock pre market, went all the way down to 309. Um, you know, you had Goldman Sachs. Usually, the Goldman Sachs is an axe in the trade, it usually will follow through, but it does show you. Uh, how good the bulls have been acting, especially in the last couple of days, defending levels, reclaiming back levels, even stocks that get downgraded with a sell recommendation uh, ahead of earnings, not only shook off the downgrade, but now, you know, we're literally, you know, a couple of bucks away from its highs from the December 13th for its next leg up. It's pretty remarkable. Uh, names like Meta uh, continue to shine, right? No matter what happens, Meta just continue to go higher. Uh, Amazon is getting very, very close, maybe a day or two away. We're not out of the woods yet on Amazon, but you see the 50 day moving average, this light blue line. I, I think for Amazon to really break its downtrend, it's gonna need to test that light blue line, which is the 50 day moving average, and then it's gonna need one more day to get through it. And if you look at the option activity uh, in Amazon, they were coming for the 93, 94, and 95 weeklies, okay? Considering uh, the stock is at 90, with only a couple of days left, it's a, you know it's a pretty uh, pretty big statement. Did every single stock rally? No, right? Microsoft, despite uh, an upgrade today, uh, an upgrade didn't act great. I know it was up a dollar and change on the day, but it didn't act great. It got stuffed uh, on yesterday's highs. At one point, it looked like it was gonna go red. Uh, Apple did go red, right? Apple did go red. We talked about Apple yesterday. Uh, there was a pivot below this 129.80s, went all the way down to the five-day moving average. Uh, Tesla, it's, it's actually been uh, holding up very, very well. It's now it's building in a very, very tight channel. Here, guys, I want to show you. Well, let's play a game. You guys remember this muscle memory game, right? You see how you see how Tesla right over here 
on December 29th held the five-day moving average. You see how Tesla today held the five-day moving average? It's exactly the same scenario going back into this whole channel here. Tesla has is getting very, very tight. We're either going to confirm the top of the channel. I know it sounds so simplistic to say, but this is kind of what it, what it is. This is how tight Tesla is getting. We're either going to confirm this whole top of the channel that started on December 30th that came up a little bit short yesterday, or we're going to lose the five-day moving average in the next couple of days. And you can remember, you guys remember when we lost the five-day moving average last time? It was 14 points down. So something, again, something has to give them Tesla. I'm, I'm very, very patient uh, I'm watching it. Uh, there was a you know cute little pivot today to the downside uh, from the 17 handle to the, to the five day uh, rising support, but now it's getting super tight. I'm telling you, if you're patient enough, eventually in the next couple of days, we're either gonna confirm this top of the channel and start swinging to the 30s, or we're gonna lose, lose this five day moving average and start making our way back to the recent lows. Something to definitely, definitely watch. If you are a, a Tesla trader, you, you keep an eye on it the last couple of days of highs and lows. Again, I'm not gonna give you guys a specific price. Again, do your homework. It's much more rewarding to understand where the channels are for yourself and somebody to show you and tell you where the channels are. Again, look at this, guys. Nice and tight. Nice and tight on both. Whatever side is going to trade, we will be uh, ready for it. Uh, the big event, obviously, price action event coming for this week is going to be uh, the January CPI. That is Thursday. Uh, obviously, I don't have to tell you guys uh, how important, how aggressive uh, that number has been. It's shown us incredible two and a half, three, four sometimes percent moves uh, in the NASDAQ each direction. So we don't know what they're going to say. We don't know what, how it's going to uh, play out. But the point is, I could see it a scenario of a flatter day, maybe a little bit more of a contracting uh, type day in the markets tomorrow, just kind of a kind of a res day ahead uh, of the CPI on Thursday. But who knows, right? Who knows exactly uh, how this is going to play out? As we say all the time, be prepared on both sides. And, and now again, there's names I am definitely watching uh, for tomorrow. Let's just quickly break down the ETF side of it. Uh, QQQ continues, right? Continues two days in a row. We talked about it last night, how it needs to continue to defend that 270 level that it reclaimed off the 70 level. It did that today, right? The big number on the Qs, and guys, write this down. This is, this is not a subjective, uh, this is not a subjective number for our future. If you're a bull, whatever God you pray to, okay, we need, we need for the Qs to get above 278. If we can get above 278 on the close, that will reclaim the 50-day moving average. I don't have to tell you what happens when you reclaim the 50-day moving average or lose the 50-day moving average. So if the CPI number comes out in the next couple of days and it's a good number and the Q start you know, getting above this 278 level, we'll be super duper bullish uh, and seeing how the bulls can increase their price performance there. But at the same time, we have to watch the five-day moving average here. And if the, if, if the bulls start giving up this 268 level, which is the shortest term sentiment, which is the five-day moving average, nothing good is going to happen because the five-day uh, will be lost. SPX, uh, let me just, let's talk about uh, the SPX instead of the SPY, just from a dynamic point of view. What we lost yesterday on the close of this inverted hammer, follow through this morning. Again, look how it held, right? Perfectly on the five-day moving average and the SPX reclaimed this 3907 on the close. That's bullish, right? That's a bullish, bullish thing. So now that the SPX first close over the 50-day moving average, that's a good, that's a feather in the bull's hat. Now the next uh, level of importance for the Qs are to do the same thing. Obviously, uh, the S and P 500 is a little bit more broader, right? There's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more companies that are not going to be as dynamic as far as average true range. So it might take a little bit more time for the Nasdaq, considering it was the worst uh, performing vehicle out of all the major benchmarks in 2022, to catch up. But at least we know the levels, right? Bull's job is to build above today's channel on the SPYs going to tomorrow. And the bull's job for the Qs is to reclaim that 278 level. Again, it might not happen uh, until the CPI, but we're at least we're at striking distance, right? We closed roughly around 273 on the Qs. At least we're striking distance. This is all we need, guys. All we need to get risk back on for the swings and positions and all that stuff is that first close, right? That first close over the 50-day. Here's what happened the last time. It closed the first day uh, over the 50-day, started a four-day rally. Here's the last time 
Uh, here's the last time in a bigger picture right here. Last time right over here on uh, July the 18th, we closed above the 50-day 50, 50 moving average, started a month and a half rally. So you can understand how important that 50-day moving average is going to be. I don't think it's going to be tested tomorrow. You never know. But I do believe uh, the CPI number uh, will be a very, very important uh, component, uh, driving force for that test and hopefully reclaim. Let me give you guys a couple of symbols that I like uh, for tomorrow's session, and then we will depart because I got a basketball game to go to. So let's talk about some names. Uh, yeah, let me, you know, might as well start off with Netflix, right? I mean, is there anything more bullish than shaking off a, a Goldman Sachs, uh, a Goldman Sachs uh, downgrade? Probably not, right? So this thing, you know, let's, let's keep an eye on watch on this top of the channel here, December highs. If it reclaims December highs, this thing could wake up. Uh, look at First Solar, looks great, right? First Solar looks really good here. Stopped at the linear regression line. Again, you have the November, uh, the end of November, early part of December highs uh, to watch on deck. A name that I, I don't really trade, but look at Spotify, right? Spotify, man, it was above the 50 day for a while, busted out of this last channel here. If this thing could just confirm it, who knows? Maybe you could get a move to 94, 95, and a smaller name, right? Also an EV name, uh, Lucid, right? Sneaky chart, not a lot of people are gonna be on the radar on this thing. You know, maybe it confirms, maybe it doesn't, but it broke out of this little baby little channel today, stopped perfectly on the 20 day supply. They were coming in for weekly 750, uh, next week's $8 calls. So if the market continues uh, to act really well, keep an eye on Lucid. If it could reclaim back uh, this 20-day moving average. Maybe this thing can wake up. And you can see here how much measured potential uh, that it has. So that's it, guys. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. Hopefully, everybody's happy. But most important, hopefully, everybody's healthy. Guys, God bless. And I will see you tomorrow on tomorrow's video. Take care.